Welcome to part 5 of the repair title How to replace the cylinder heads on Dodge 4.7 liter single overhead cam engine. The vehicle we're working on is a 2002 Dodge Durango. On previous videos, I'll show you how to remove all the accessories, including the valve covers, rocker arms, lifters, and how to align the timing chain. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to finish taking this engine apart. And what we have left is a timing cover, timing chains, and cylinder heads. So stay tuned. Slide your drain pan to the right hand side of the engine and disconnect the low radiator hose from the thermostat housing and disconnect it from the radiator and remove the lower radiator hose. When removing the timing cover it is not necessary to remove the water pump. The only bolts that you do need to remove are the upper ones. This one, that one, that one. So four of them. Okay, the, the four upper ones are the ones you need to remove. And of course you need to finish removing all the outer timing cover bolts. You know, all the way around. Remove them all and separate the timing cover from the engine. There's a bolt behind the tensioner, so remove the belt tensioner retaining bolt. Remove the tensioner and then you'll be able to get to the bolt behind it. Once you have removed all the bolts, just separate the timing cover from the engine. And yes, it's kind of a good mess, but just ran right there into the pan. Alright, so now you can see the timing chains. Keeping the timing aligned is crucial. One tooth off on any of the chains, um, and it'll make your vehicle run really rough. Two or more, and you're probably going to vent valves. So to the lower chains, you're going to look in here and in here, plus the dot right there on this broken needs to be completely up all the way up there you go see the dark links two of them and then they're perfectly aligned right there in the center and that is the same way on the other side even though it's harder to see because the other side has the inner chain but you can see them a little bit the only thing I couldn't see when I aligned my when I aligned the timing marks uh, when the timing cover was still on was these uh, different color links for the crankshaft sprocket but what I did to keep me from rotating this engine like 500 more times to make sure every single one is aligned I just painted a mark here and I did the same thing I painted a mark that aligns the timing chain with the dot on the sprocket next step remove the bolts that hold the left tensioner and remove the tensioner from the engine. Note that they're marked. Note that they're marked, you know, L for the left and R for right. But for right now, remove just the left. Next, remove this bolt using a T40 Torx bit and slide this guide out. I actually made this custom tool when I was doing a previous job on a Dodge Ram pickup that also had a 4.7 the cool thing about it is I made it to where it slides on the camshaft sprocket and it allows me to keep the alignment and I kept the bolts that I'll be putting on you know right here and right there but I'm gonna install this after I remove the chain right now I'm just showing how this tool will keep the alignment in this camshaft and I also made one for the other side so I'll show you how they look when they're both installed pushing it from the inside remove this plug next remove this bolt this bolt and remove the lower guide by sliding it out next step is to loosen the camshaft bolt I'm gonna use the tool I made to hold it but you can use vice grip pliers in between the lobes right here using like a rag to avoid damaging the cam all you wanna do is avoid the cam from turning and then if you use air tools it'll be easier too 
then the cam won't tend to move as much. Don't remove it yet, but loosen it up. Hold the sprocket with your hand. Remove the bolt. And slide the sprocket out and detach the chain from it. Put the sprocket back on. Install the bolt. And like I said, I'm going to keep my alignment with the tool I made. You know, just for right now, for my reference. This will definitely help me when I'm installing the chains on because I will know for sure that the sprockets are where they need to be. You don't have to make a tool like that, but I made it last time. I didn't have the compressor at the time to compress the springs, so it was crucial for me not to allow the camshaft to move when removing the head uh, but since I already have it then I'm gonna use it in this job next remove the right hydraulic tensioner and remove remove the bolt with the torques with the T40 torques that holds the lower guide and slide this guide out remove this plug using an inch and an eighth socket with this plug removed you can access the bolt to holds the guide right here Remove the lower bolt and slide the guide out. This guide is easier to remove from the inside. Listen the right camshaft bolt the same way you did the left and separate the timing chain from the sprocket. Compress the tensioner using channel lock pliers. Slide a pin right here and right there to keep it compressed. This is how the pin install would have looked. Now this tensioner was too fragile and it broke off. So I'm gonna have to just remove it and replace it with a new one. But I'm showing you where the pin should have been located. That way you can compress yours. Last step will be to remove the upper sprocket bolt and remove all the chains as an assembly, all three. I made this extra marks right here just to guide me when reinstalling the chains, make sure they're all aligned. I moved the left chain a little bit so you can see the alignment and one of the easiest things to do to keep your chains aligned uh, during installation is to put rubber bands to keep them tight so that's you know an easy trick there's a special tool made to keep them in place but you can get away just by using rubber bands on both so here's how my timing components look now obviously I'm gonna need a new tensioner it's broken I may install all new guides the chains didn't have play so what I'll do I'll price all these components I may install an entire new timing kit we'll see but in the meantime I want to keep them organized that way I know which location they go even down to the bolts let's keep it thing organized pays off big time for this next step working from underneath the car remove the nuts there's two on each exhaust flange that fasten the exhaust pipe to the exhaust manifolds because it's not necessary to remove the manifolds from the cylinder head to to get the heads out of the vehicle because it would be too hard to get to the lower bolts on the manifold anyways you know they're right there so you may have to spray these studs with some kind of a liquid penetrant to make sure that they come off easily otherwise you may break them off when you're trying to loosen them up create more work so do this on both cylinder heads disconnect the ground strap from the back of the passenger side cylinder head you can have five large bolts on the top 
five large bolts on the bottom and then you have two small bolts make sure you remove the two bolts located on the inside on the edge of the head there's two you know, they do the same thing that these do they keep the outer side of the cylinder head in place Remove the last two little bolts, and then you may have to pry gently on the head to break it loose, and just pull it out. And there's the first cylinder head. Out of the engine. As you can tell, it comes off with the exhaust manifold attached. Remove the cylinder head on the other side the same way. Alright, so the heads are off, and looks like the only cylinder that ended up with a little bit of water was the front one. See the different color it got washed off by the water compared to the other ones that are black. Um, What's interesting was that this ended up not being the major issue with the engine. I'll show you in a second what the major issue is and it could have been caused when the engine got hot. On the rear cylinder, the valve seat came off of the cylinder head. So this cylinder was not sealing and obviously didn't have compression. It's possible that when the engine got hot that that could have been enough heat to soften the metal and then the seat coming off. The other one doesn't have any damage but this one does and thankfully this didn't hit the piston so the piston is in good shape otherwise I would have to have the need to replace the piston which I wouldn't be very thrilled about it. Alright so here are all my parts organized from my timing components to both cylinder heads and the locations they came out of. Now because of what happened to this cylinder head with the valve seat uh, coming off, I'm going to do a little research to see if I can just buy a new set of heads. I'm a little concerned right now because it's too much work and I don't know if what happened to that head is going to happen to this one soon or maybe it will happen to one of the other cylinders. So I don't think I want to go through that so I'm going to do some homework and I'll see if I can find a new set of heads. In the meantime, all the components need to be removed. Uh, they, need to keep, they need to stay in their original locations. The caps for the camshafts, they're marked, they're numbered, and then they tell you, you know, whether left or right. So pay close attention to each component, each location. Remove the spark plugs. And depending on why you're removing your cylinder heads, uh, in your case, maybe you just need to take them to the machine shop. I'm, that's what I was planning to do. It's looking that I'm going to change gears a little bit. In either case, I'm going to show you in upcoming videos how to put it all back together, how to torque them. That way you'll know how to finish the job. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you'll know when the next video comes up. Also, don't forget to visit our online store. We have a great selection of accessories for cars, trucks, and SUVs. See you next time.